Lake's Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone Mud Volcano in one half of Yellowstone Lake. The entire time today that we are on board the Lake Queen 2, we will be within side the boundaries um, of the caldera to one of the world's largest and most active super volcanoes. figured out we need the money. So here's my proposal to you. I will put together a party of explorers. We'll go out there and document this landscape on the condition that you pay for it. And Congress agreed to this. So Ferdinand Hayden got a botanist, a biologist, a painter, a photographer, and other explorers just like him. And they came throughout Yellowstone. They went to Hayden Valley, the Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone, Mud Volcano, Old Faithful, and they were just blown away by this place, thinking this was this incredible landscape that needed to be preserved. And it was at that point in time that they got then to Yellowstone Lake. And his right-hand man, James Stevenson, wanted to know more. This is where he became very intrigued. So he builds himself a 12-foot sailboat, named it the Anna, and set sail. His goal was to determine how large this lake actually was. Keeping in mind that this is 1871, so a time before high-tech gizmos and gadgets, he's doing every all of this math with his brain, pen, and paper. He determines that Yellowstone Lake is 131 square miles. So now we fast forward in time, and we go to our time of motorboats, high-tech gizmos and gadgets, and it's time to remap this lake and determine just how large it actually is. Well, they come back to report that Yellowstone Lake is indeed 131.7 square miles. So for James Stevenson and all of his accuracy, they decided to dedicate and uh, give him his very own island, Stevenson Island. Now here's something that James Stevenson and Ferdinand Hayden probably did not know, but would, in my guess, have found incredibly fascinating. Keep in mind again that Hayden is a geologist. So, at the beginning of the boat tour, I mentioned to you all that on the entire time today that we're on the Lake Queen 2, we will be within inside the boundaries to the Yellowstone Caldera. Within inside this caldera, we also have such things like Old Faithful, Mud Volcano, uh, Midway Geyser Basin, all of these areas with hydrothermal features. So should Yellowstone Lake be any different just because there's water on top? No. And in fact, it is no different. If we were to drain all the lake, all the water from the lake again, taking 8 to 10 years, we would find there to be more hydrothermal features in this lake than anywhere else in the park. We have geysers, steam vents, craters, fissures, you name it, it is here. So let's see. Um, this is a photo of an underwater plumbing system um, for a geyser here in the park. And this geyser is actually, if you look out, let's see, that's up to your left. Uh, looking off to your left, you can see kind of a hillside and there's a little bit of steam rising. That's Steamboat Point. And just off Steamboat Point is this geyser. Pretty remarkable. And then this is just a map upside down of where some of those features are. So I'll go ahead and pass both of these around. When they get back to you, you can just hand it back to me. You cannot see a single permanent structure. That. It's pretty phenomenal. When this park is established, we have no idea what a national park should be here to do. Eventually, it's decided upon that the park should be here to preserve and protect the natural and cultural features for future generations. If you look out to your left, you can see Mount Sheridan. Mount Sheridan is kind of a long, recent one with a little bit of snow trying to hang on. And then just behind Mount Sheridan, peeking out, trying to make an appearance is the Grand Teton itself, rising more than 13,500 feet high. And so imagine, if you will, a casino right there in front of it, or a hotel. It would not have that very spectacular or grand view that we have today. It's pretty remarkable that we get to hold on to that. Now in front of Mount Sheridan, there's a small island with a lot of trees on it. This island was once a zoo. 
E.C. Waters got permission from the Calvary, because they were the folks who originally ran the show here. He got permission from the Calvary to place on that island some animals, like bison, bighorn sheep, and elk. And as you were on board the Zilla or the E.C. Waters, he would say, Hey, all of you visiting Yellowstone, how many of you have seen bison? And uh, you wouldn't have because there were 24 wild bison left in the park at that time. Elk would have been much more difficult to see. Big horn sheep as well. So he was like, ah, uh, no. And then his next question would have been, how many of you would like to see animals? And you'd say, yes, please. So he would take you over to that island over there, and you were guaranteed wildlife sightings of, again, bison, big horn sheep, and elk. Now the issue is, you take all of these land grazers and stick them on an island. What's going to happen to their food source? It's going to disappear because they're going to eat it all. Logic would then tell you that you take them to a different island, remove them from that island, uh, or maybe bring them in food. Great idea. EC Waters thought, that was thought so as well. So we decided to start bringing them in scraps of food from the Lake Hotel. Um, <laughs> yeah, how many of you have eaten at any of the hotels here in the park? Do they serve sagebrush and grass? <laughs> no, they are, so the food, their diet, it's not natural to them, the food that they're, he's bringing. So they begin looking very sick, malnourished, and like you could poke them and they're just gonna fall over and die. So now, the animals you were promised, well, they're malnourished. So you're pretty mad about that. And as you're reboarding the boat, he says, 50 cents. And you're like, what? So yeah, it's an additional 50 cents to reboard the boat and get back to your destination. But you're on an island, so of course you're going to pay the man. Keeping in mind a day's wage back then was about $3.50 to $4. Yeah. So it's a lot of money. So now you're really, you're really angry. This last little bit just pushed you over the edge, and you want justice. So what do you do if you're really angry and want somebody to hear your complaints? Are you going to write to me? You're going to write to Congress. Richard or John? You're going to write to Congress. Exactly. You flood Congress with thousands of letters telling them all about this man and his poor business practices. Eventually, all of that news gets back to the president. Um, the president, of course, is Theodore Roosevelt, a wildlife lover and an advocate of the national parks. And he writes E.C. Waters a letter saying, hey, guess what? Um, you have rendered yourself obnoxious. He actually uses that word. And because of your obnoxious behaviors in the summer of 2000, no, 1907, um, you, sir, are debarred from the park, never to return until you get written permission from the Secretary of the Interior. So it's at that point in time that Easty Waters leaves the park, the wildlife are returned to the mainland, and the boat is taken to Stevenson Island. Park because it's Yellowstone. But even more importantly than that, Yellowstone is your national park. Going back to what the mission of the Park Service is, it's here to preserve and protect the natural and cultural features. But why? It is here for future generations and the benefit and enjoyment of the people. If you all were not coming to our national parks, well, we wouldn't need to protect the grizzly bears and have safety messages and all of that. The grizzlies would be able to roam much anywhere they wanted in this park. Um, but then who would get to enjoy that? What would be the point of all that? So that is what the parks, whether it's Yellowstone, Grand Tetons, another national park, there's something now 402 units in the park service. Um, that's what each and every one of them are here for. It's for all of you to go out there and reconnect, connect with nature, history, uh, battlefields, you know, whatever it happens to be. So thank you all so much for coming to visit your national parks because again if it weren't for you all um, you know this, well we wouldn't really have these anymore so as you're driving throughout Yellowstone keep that thought in mind keep that in mind as you're driving around and you get stuck in a bison jam from one grizzly bear up uh, one bison walking the roadway anything along those lines just remember um, that not everybody gets to come here Yellowstone is pretty remote destination it takes a lot of time um, so just you know, really go out there and enjoy this place because, you know, it's one of a kind. It's unique. Where else can you go to see bison, grizzlies, elk, wolves, mountains, geysers, hot springs, waterfalls? This is the only place in the world where you can.
Thank you for watching. If you like the videos, please subscribe. Just click on the Whipple Wheel button. Thank you.